Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice homemade equation. We have x to the fourth power plus x minus one, all of that to the fourth power equals two minus x to the fourth power. Now, if you go ahead and expand the left-hand side, we get something like this. x to the power 16 plus four x to the power 13 minus four x to the power 12 plus six x to the power 10 minus 12 x to the power nine plus 6x to the power 8th, and then plus 4x to the power 7, and then, hold on, are you serious? Do you really want to expand this? What are you going to do with that? There is no hexadecic formula. This is a hexadecic equation, or something like a hexadecimal, but that's used for the bases. So uh, we would probably call this hexadecic anyways. There's no hexadecic formula, unfortunately. There is no quintic formula either. Right? There is no formula with starting with the fifth degree and above. Unfortunately, we don't have a general formula. So what do we do? Are we stuck? Uh-oh. No, you're not because CyberMath is coming to the rescue. By the way, if you like complex numbers, I have another channel called A plus BI where I talk about complex numbers. Great, so there is something special with this. Let me tell you that first, okay? But what is that thing? We're gonna talk about it. If I did not forget to include the graph, I will also show you the graph. I can't remember, sometimes I forget. But let's go ahead and add x to the fourth power to both sides, because you know what? This might be helpful. So when we add x to the fourth power, we are isolating the constant on the right-hand side, which is not always desirable because usually want to put everything on the same side, but you've noticed, right? We get a very hectic, hexadecic, hec uh, hexa, hectic, whatever formula. It's not going to, I mean, a polynomial that is super complicated, right? We can't solve it. So what do we do? Maybe something from uh, sum of two fourth powers. Does that mean anything? Maybe. I don't know. But notice that as soon as I added x to the fourth power, that should ring a bell, did it? And it should be this one. Notice that we have an x to the fourth power here and we have an x to the fourth power here. So what? We also have a fourth power on the outside. Don't worry about that. But x to the fourth is not by itself. If you focus inside the parentheses, x to the fourth is followed by x minus one. So that's what we're missing, what we're missing here. Wow. Are we going to use factoring? Let's find out. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more because this is not complete. So I'm going to go ahead and add x minus 1 to both sides, and that's going to be 2 plus x minus 1. So we're adding x minus 1 to both sides, this one and this one. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, how does that help? Are we going to use factoring? No. It's different. It's actually more special. Now, take a good picture. You know who used to say that? I'm Escalante. If you don't know him, look him up. Anyways, so at this point, you should recognize the pattern, but there's a problem. Houston, we have a problem. The problem is on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's simplify what's on the right-hand side first and write it as x plus 1. Awesome. Notice that everything looks good except for one thing. This one sticks out, okay? We don't like that. I mean, we like 1 as a number but it's just not in the right place. What does that mean? It means that it should be on the left-hand side. And you're like, why? You'll see in a little bit, okay? Just remember that question, why? So let's go ahead and subtract one from both sides. That's a positive one. And when you subtract one, don't write it as minus two, but do the subtractions separately because that's a special one, okay? Do you see what I'm talking about? Yes. We're going to use an amazing method, which is called, are you ready? Substitution. Yay. So we're going to go ahead and call this Y. Remember you asked, why are we doing this? This is Y. So now we get the following from here. X to the fourth plus X minus one is named as Y. Good. That's what this means. But at the same time, by doing that, you're getting another equation. 
look at the big picture, okay? That's why it's important to take a good picture. Always look at the big picture. Back up a little bit if you're writing on the whiteboard. That happened to me a lot, by the way, and blackboard doesn't matter. I, I Most of the time when I was teaching, I used whiteboards. But anyways, it's amazing how much you can see when you back up. Like when you get farther and farther away from the board, you start seeing things. That's what I I'd like you to do. If you're watching this on a TV, make sure to back up a lot because you know, and make sure you check your back uh, so you don't hit anything, okay? So what am I getting from here? When you look at the big picture, you're hopefully gonna realize. And by the way, to look at the big picture, I can kind of zoom out, right? Does that give you that feeling? Look at this. Y is x to the fourth plus x minus one, but at the same time, it gives me y to the fourth plus y minus one equals x. You see that? Beautiful. This is just amazing. The power of substitution is beyond description. Okay, I'm not exaggerating. Seriously, this is math and this is love. Okay, I hope you feel the same way. So what are we going to do with this? Easy. Solve this as a system because solving it as an equation is super hard. Impossible, probably. But at least we can find some solutions. I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to find, oh, we're going to find all the solutions because, oh, come on. This is hexadexic. It has 16 complex solutions. Of course, complex solutions include the real ones. But anyways, let's continue from amazing, right? This is amazing. Now, here's what we're going to do. Subtract these equations. x to the fourth plus x minus 1 minus y to the fourth plus y minus 1 equals y minus x. You're like, why? Because this is going to give us some solutions. All right, ready? X to the fourth, take a look. Minus y to the fourth. X minus y. Negative one plus one, cancel. They're the same, so their difference is zero. Make sense? Equals y minus x. Put everything on the same side now because you got a beautiful equation in two variables. How beautiful is that? X plus x, two x minus two y equals zero. Awesome. Now, this is factorable into difference of two squares, right? One of which is a difference of two squares. So we're going to factor again one more time. Keep factoring until you get to the end. <laughs> There's always an end, right? So this will become x plus y, and then x minus y, and then followed by x squared plus y squared. And the second term is 2 times x minus y. Now, what is a common factor? x minus y is a common factor. Take it out. And don't worry about the rest because this is cool. Now, what are you writing? Kind of worry about the rest, but don't worry too much about it because it's going to get complicated one more time. And that's equal to zero. Now, from here, we get something super duper awesome, which is x minus y equals zero or y equals x or x equals y, however you want to write. But y equals x is a huge improvement. I'll show you why in a little bit. But then let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'd rather not look at it because... That's complicated. How can we solve it? I have no idea. I mean, I have some ideas, but they're super complicated. I don't think you want to go that route. But if you really want to go that route, like you like trouble, then you can go ahead and expand it, come up with a cubic equation in X or Y, and solve the cubic formula, and good luck with that. If you ever find a solution, please share with us the solution. Thank you. Now, Y equals X is going to give us what? Let's go back. What is Y? What is y? I don't know. I forgot. Oh, yes. This is y. <laughs> okay. This is why we did this. So now replace y with x. Really? Are you serious? That's going to be cool. Look at this. x to the fourth plus x minus one equals x. And then x cancels out. Ta-da. You end up with x to the fourth minus one equals zero. Beautiful. Uh, you can set x to the fourth equals one, but that's going to give you the real solutions only. Let's go ahead and take it to another level. Kind of like maybe like this, and then you can kind of write it as x plus i, x minus i. Who said some of two squares cannot be factored? Of course it can be factored in the complex world, but wait a minute, this channel is not about complex numbers. It doesn't matter, we can still talk about it, because a plus bi is about complex numbers, right? Did you forget? Hopefully you remember. Anyways, from here we get four solutions. x equals negative i, x equals i, x equals negative one, x equals one. Do they all satisfy the original equation? I don't know, I'm too lazy to check, please do the check for me. But this brings us to the end of this video. I don't think I'm going to be able to solve 
any other solutions because that's very hexadecic. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.